Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to the session of the course Therapeutic Nutrition. This is our fourth module that is etiology, clinical features and nutritional management of weight imbalances and eating disorders. And in this lecture, we shall be learning about nutritional management of eating disorders. So in this lecture, we shall learn how to define eating disorders and then how to classify them and diagnose the patients who are suffering from these different uh, eating disorders and then we will learn how to manage these eating disorders along with nutritional management of anorexia nervosa and bulimia nervosa condition in the previous lectures of this module we focused on weight management and it is important to understand that the problems they are associated with too much of deviation on either side from the appropriate range of body weight where there is increase in risk of getting health problem and in many conditions obsession with slimming especially among the adolescent age group that can actually result in many kind of eating disorders like anorexia nervosa and bulimia nervosa and what are these eating disorders and what are the strategies which we can use to manage such condition and how to cope up with the problems uh, when we are refeeding these individuals after such an acute phase of starvation we shall be studying about these things in this lecture so feeding and eating disorders they can be characterized by a persistent disturbance of eating or eating relating behavior that results in significantly impaired physical health and psychosocial functioning so let's study some terms important to study eating disorders the first term is anorexia it refers to loss of appetite especially as a result of disease and another term is anorexia nervosa a disease which is characterized by refusal to maintain a minimally normal body weight here there is intense fear of gaining weight and body image distortion happens and amenorrhea in postmenarchal females can occur and binge an episode of eating which is marked by three peculiar features that is the amount of food eaten is larger than most person would eat under similar circumstances second uh, feature would be an excessive eating occurs in a discrete period of time usually less than 2 hours the person will be eating very frequently and the eating is accompanied by a subjective sense of loss of control the person loses control over his uh, appetite and the, he will never feel satiated and then comes binge eating disorder a disorder which is characterized by occurrence of binge eating episode at least twice a week for 6 months period so the next is bulimia nervosa it is a disorder which is characterized by repeated episodes of binge eating followed by inappropriate compensatory methods such as it could be purging or including self induced vomiting or misuse of laxative diuretics or non purging including fasting or engaging in extensive physical exercise so there could be 
and other eating disorder which are not otherwise specified. It is a diagnostic criteria for eating disorders that fail to meet the criteria for either anorexia nervosa or bulimia nervosa. Then purging is another term which we must understand. It is a method intending to reverse the effect of binge eating. This may involve self-induced vomiting which is most common purging method. An additional method may include laxative, anema or diuretic abuse. So let us study the first type of eating disorder that is anorexia nervosa in detail. So in anorexia nervosa, there is voluntary self-starvation which results in emaciation. And in this condition, the person refuses to maintain the body weight at or above a minimally normal weight for age or height. There is intense fear of gaining weight or becoming fat even though the person may be actually so underweight or totally emaciated. And it is developed during pre pubescence period which may result in arrested sexual maturation and it may actually delay the menarche also. We can categorize anorexia nervosa into two diagnostic subtypes. The first one is restricting type and the second one is binge eating or purging type. In restricting type, as the name suggests, the person will fail to adhere to the normal eating pattern and he will simply refuse to eat normal food because the person is fearing that he will become overweight and the binge eating or purging type is this type of people they are regularly engaged in binge eating or the purging behavior just like bulimia nervosa but the difference in this condition is that here the person is already underweight and still that person is going for this purging behavior. Coming to the incidence, it typically occurs during the adolescence or young adulthood. Late onset may develop in response to adverse life events. And this incidence rate among middle aged women, say over 50, accounts for around less than 1%. This problem is more prevalent in developed countries and uh, it is less uh, in the developing countries. The exact cause of eating disorders is not known. It is multifactorial in origin in which the personality of the patient, family relationship, then socio-cultural factors along with some genetic factors, they could interact and play some role. Although we do not know what are the fundamental causes of anorexia nervosa, but there is a growing evidence that it is interaction of sociocultural and biological factors contributing to its causation. And it has uh, some less specific psychological mechanism and a vulnerability of personality could be one of the reasons. It is possible that the disorders begin when there is a disturbed family relationship and there, when the overprotective families, rigid families and too much goal oriented uh, scenario is there. And some of them, they may have huge, unusual interest in weight, uh, food or shape of their body. Occupation may also play a role in this uh, disorder. Dancers, for example, they have a higher prevalence of anorexia nervosa, which, it, which is uh, around 10 times more than the general population. So, if we wish to diagnose anorexia nervosa, body weight less than 85% than expected is one important tool, or failure to make the expected weight gain during the period of growth leading to body weight less than 85% of expected is also one diagnostic tool. Then disturbance in a way in which the one's weight or shape is experienced, undue influence of body weight or shape on self-evaluation 
or denial of seriousness of the current or low body weight they will feel that they are rather obese but actually they are emaciated there is intense fear of gaining weight or becoming fat even though they are underweight in postmenarchal females we can diagnose this problem along with the above issues of underweight and uh, fear of gaining weight there would be absence of at least three consecutive menstrual cycles now coming to the clinical features their body appearance makes them look younger than their age the patient may deny hunger thinness or fatigue despite profound weight loss they will not accept that they have this issue and they may be preoccupied with food and may take pleasure in cooking and serving meal for others but they wish not to eat that food and they generally have constipation and they are intolerant to cold in severe cases the bones they protrude through the skin as there is hardly any body fat left the skin may be dry and scaly the palms may be yellow because of uh, carotenemia and then their body hair could be increased we call it frank hirsutism and edema may be present because they are on energy deficient diet and proteins are not there and then parotid glands may be enlarged in this condition so this disorder is associated with undernutrition of varying severity with resulting many secondary endocrine and metabolic changes and disturbances of whole bodily function the complications they include sudden death because of cardiac issue and a decline in weight to say 35% below the ideal uh, body weight it will increase the risk of death so let's summarize what is the effect of uh, anorexia nervosa on the body the brain which cannot think right and there is always a uh, fear of uh, weight gain and uh, here they become thin and they become brittle also there will be low blood pressure lower heart rate will be there they can feel palpitations they would be anemic and there could be kidney failure or kidney stones they can occur and bloating and constipation can be felt in many of them and weak muscles swollen joints and they are more prone to fractures and osteoporosis because of their eating habits and then uh, because of hormonal disturbances there will be more bone loss and uh, the skin will bruise easily they will be having dry skin and there will be growth of fine hair all over the body we call it hirsutism and uh, they feel cold very easily because there is hardly any fat left in their body the skin is yellow or pale in uh, color and nails are brittle and there could be low potassium low magnesium and low sodium because of uh, fluid imbalance and then in women the periods they would stop and there will be trouble getting pregnant once they are uh, with reaching that stage and during the pregnancy higher risk of miscarriages cesarean section and low birth weight baby and uh, postpartum depression are the normal complications in this condition good nutritional management of patients with eating disorders they require attention to a number of areas it is important to have a nutritional assessment of all the patient through diet history then we can go for weight history as well as assessment of biochemical metabolic um, metabolic and anthropometric measurements they can be taken into account for uh, taking the medical nutrition therapy further and the overall goal of nutrition rehabilitation of anorexia nervosa patient is to restore the normal weight and it is important to normalize the eating pattern and then achieving the normal perception of hunger and satiety and correct the biological and psychological sequel of the malnutrition so the dietary treatment aims 
to establish a normal pattern of food intake to encourage a nutritional intake which is appropriate to individuals needs and to restore weight and maintain body weight within a normal range so to achieve this goal we need to understand that in the severely malnourished patient two separate but linked processes they are bound to occur first the inadequate food consumption that will lead to wasting and functional changes in all the tissues and secondly the general metabolic response to infection trauma or other stress that will result in further nutrient losses and cellular damages so starting to eat again after a long period of prolonged starvation will lead to a complication which is known as refeeding syndrome which can precipitate problems and complications in such patients so the refeeding syndrome is shift in the fluids and electrolytes which are resulting in hormonal and metabolic changes and they may actually cause serious clinical complication so therefore the nutritional management of severe anorexic patient is different from a normal anorexic person so the treatment of an anorexic person is taken ahead with three consecutive phases in mind so the first phase is known as resuscitation phase for this we have to identify and correct any medical emergencies Uh, such as they could be having some hypoglycemia hypothermia or there could be electrolyte imbalances there could be dehydration also or cardiovascular function they might have been affected so after that infections also may also be treated and this is followed by second stage that is known as the repair phase that uh, takes into account the correction of multiple specific nutrient deficiencies and uh, that correction will take us to the third step that is known as repletion here the main aim is to return the body composition to the normal but the abnormal body composition can only be corrected safely when there is slow and systematic repletion and treatment regime is planned because the abrupt planning or abrupt increase in the calories can cause refeeding syndrome so coming to weight management as we had already discussed that we should go very slow because there are risk of refeeding syndrome so the first phase that is initial weight gain phase will usually start with 30 to 40 kilo calorie per day per day and approximately 1000 calories can be provided and the range could be anywhere between 1000 to 1600 kilo calories depending upon the risk assessment of refeeding syndrome this level of intake should be continued until it is confirmed that the gut function has normalized and if there is any water overload uh, if present it is beginning to resolve usually this uh, period uh, takes around 7 to 10 days so therefore after that the food intake can be increased and Uh, this will start with a controlled weight gain phase so here we go for small progressive increments in the food to promote expected rate of controlled weight gain and here it has to be increased quickly as the level of supervision and support will allow now intake may have to be increased as high as 7 to uh, 70 to 100 kilo calories per kilogram uh, body weight per day and in some patients during uh, this weight gain phase we may aim for a weight gain of around half a kilo to 1 kilo uh, which is uh, generally considered optimum so the rate of gain that will slow down as the weight will increase so uh, owing to an increase in metabolic rate and there will be increase in physical activity also so uh, it may be appropriate to increase the energy intake to compensate for this and allow a slower rate of weight gain in order to facilitate the stopping of the other uh, maintenance figures so uh, this is followed by the weight maintenance phase so here if we can see we can provide 
uh, as high as 3000 kilocalories to 4000 kilocalories in case of females and we can go up to uh, 4000 to 4500 kilocalories in case of males but here we have to to take into account that what is the condition for example uh, we they have to be evaluated for uh, presence of vomiting or whether they are discarding any food or is there any increase in exercise or there is any increased motor activity or increased resting energy expenditure so this takes us to the final phase that is weight maintenance phase the intake level during weight maintenance for adults as it is needed in children and adolescent for further growth and maintenance also it could be set anywhere between 40 to 60 kilocalories per kg per day the protein this should be providing 15 to 20 percent of total calories and we should always uh, recommend that the person should go for high biological value sources of protein. Coming to carbohydrates, uh, 50 to 55 percent of kilocalories are recommended, and the patient is encouraged to go for insoluble fiber for the treatment of constipation. Fat requirements are anywhere between 25 to 30 percent of kilocalories contributed by the fats and it is encouraged that small increase in fat intake should be made until the goal of total calories is achieved. Micronutrients, we have to see that the vitamin and mineral, their RDAs are properly met because these patients, they have been on very low amount of diet. So they are bound to have so many micronutrient deficiencies and uh, here we have to make sure that iron containing preparations they may uh, aggravate constipation so we have to take these little things into account so that the uh, patient does not stop eating these things because he is having some constipation because that will lower the appetite so now let's discuss the second type of eating disorder that is known as bulimia nervosa. So, if we wish to define bulimia nervosa, it is disorder which is characterized by episodes of binge eating or a very rapid intake of large amount of high calorie food, which is accompanied by self-induced vomiting. Here, the person may go for uh, uh, using laxatives or diuretics to lose weight and patients they fear that they will start gaining weight if they do not uh, purge the food which they have gorged in. It occurs in those who want to eat more but at the same time they want to remain thin. So uh, what is typical or characteristic feature of bulimia nervosa is reoccurring episode of binge eating which is followed by one or more inappropriate behavior to prevent the weight gain. These behaviors may include self-induced vomiting or laxative abuse or other abuses which we shall be discussing further. So majority of them, they will be eating large portion of food, eating in discrete period of time. They will be taking a, a meals say within a, a period of two hours and there will be a sense of lack of control over eating during the episode. They will not be able to hold themselves back whenever they are eating. So these are the three characteristic eating pattern features. And the, this binge eating and inappropriate compensatory behavior, they both occur on average at least twice a week for three months. And here, Self-evaluation is unduly influenced by the body shape and weight. They are very conscious about their body shape and weight. Coming to prevalence, uh, we do not have much data on Indian population related to this disorder. But as per American Psychiatric Association, the prevalence of bulimia nervosa in women, it is around 1 to 3 percent. It is 10 times higher uh, in females. Uh, than males. The condition that usually becomes symptomatic between the age of 13 to 20 years and then it has a chronic 
sometime episode, uh, episodic course. Just like anorexia nervosa, this bulimia nervosa is also of two types. That is purging type and non-purging type. Purging type, as the name suggests, the person is regularly engaged in self-induced vomiting or uh, he could be misusing laxatives or diuretics, etc. to get rid of whatever he has eaten. And in non-purging type, the person will use other inappropriate compensatory behaviors such as he'll be fasting or then he will be doing excessive exercise or uh, but he has not regularly engaged in self-induced vomiting, etc. So just like anorexia nervosa, bulimia nervosa is also a multifaceted disorder with psychological, uh, physiological, developmental and cultural components interacting and causing this problem. There may be genetic predisposition for this order. So other predisposing factors, they would be some psychological or personality factors such as a person who is a perfectionist or he is, who is having impaired self-concept and then he has some poor impulse control and then people who cannot handle the developmental stresses such as puberty, fear or parental relationship, they are not happy with their own self and then along with that there could be some abnormalities of central nervous system and certain uh, familial factors where the drug abusers or alcohol abusers they might be having this issue so how to diagnose bulimia nervosa patients these patients unlike those of anorexia nervosa with binge and purge subtype they are typically within the normal weight range and although some may slightly underweight or overweight, the common complaints are bloating and flatulence, which could be due to excessive gas production. And along with that, they could experience abdominal pain. They could have uh, complaints of constipation and nausea. The patients, they are secretive about uh, the eating vomiting episodes so that their family and friends, they do not know about it. And generally, one episode occurs daily and they are taking calorie dense and high carbohydrate foods like ice cream, cold drinks, bread, jam, etc. And they eat everything in the large amount. These uh, patients, they, uh, bulimia, that actually means ox hunger. This term is given to the eating pattern, which is known as uh, dietary chaos. And these patients, they tend to suffer from dental caries also because they take too much of uh, uh, sugary foods, which are uh, rich in calories. That is why uh, they experience these dental caries also. There could be frequent fluctuation in weight because sometimes they will be able to lose weight, sometimes they will not be able to achieve that desirable weight. And along with that, there would be inability to voluntarily stop eating and they will be feeling guilty or ashamed about the eating because they are not uh, sure about their uh, own health and own uh, outlook. And they will be having depressive moods which will be shifting uh, sometimes they are happy sometimes they are not that happy sometimes they are anxious and they are persistently over concerned with the body shape and weight all the time they will be talking about thinking about their looks and their body shape and what how much they have lost uh, their weight and then there is overreaction in reaction to emotional stress also. They tend to eat more whenever they are emotionally unstable. So there could be some psychiatric conditions commonly coexisting with the bulimia nervosa, which could be certain mood disorders or it could be anxiety disorders. Then the person may be having some substance related disorders where alcohol abuse could be there or stimulant abuse could be there and then along with that some of them they may have some personality disorder also so 
let us summarize what is the effect of bulimia nervosa on the generalized health. The brain is preoccupied with food and weight and they have low self-esteem. They will be anxious and may be depressed at times. And the heart may experience arrhythmia. They could be hypotensives or they could feel dizzy. And the mouth will have some uh, problem just like it could be erosion of dental enamel as we just saw in some previous slide. And then uh, it could be swollen jaw. They could have a bad breath. They could have gum diseases because of micronutrient deficiencies and tooth decay can occur because they are taking too much of sugary food items. And along with that, the kidneys, uh, they may not uh, function properly and uh, since they are not taking sufficient hydratory things, so this can lead to dehydration. And uh, in stomach, bloating could be there. There could be uh, ulcers in the stomach. They might experience constipation also. And irregular or absent periods could be there because of hormonal imbalances. And then there could be loss of libido or infertility can also happen in case of females. And then the skin will show calluses on the knuckle because uh, they are inducing the vomiting many a times. So that will lead to calluses and the skin will be dry, listless. And the muscles, they will be fatigued and there will be cramps because of electrolyte imbalance. The person will feel tired and lethargic all the time and he would not uh, like to do any kind of activity. So let's talk about the medical nutrition therapy during this condition. When it comes to calorie prescription for the patient of uh, bulimia, Initial attempts in this treatment should be aimed at correcting the dietary chaos by breaking that gorging and regurgitation cycle and stabilizing the weight should be aimed at the beginning. So uh, what we can do? We can provide around 1500 to 1600 kilocalorie per day if the patient is hypometabolic. That means his basal metabolism is lower. And if the RDA uh, of energy can be fully given when the metabolic rate is normal, that means the person is having a normal kind of uh, metabolism going on inside the body. It is neither more nor less. And we have to monitor body weight and adjust the caloric uh, prescription for weight maintenance. So if the person is uh, slightly underweight, then we will give some additional calorie. If the person is slightly overweight, then we will give a stabilizing diet. And here it is important that we avoid the weight reduction diets until the eating pattern and the body weight they have stabilized. So coming to macronutrients, protein, they should be providing uh, around 15 to 20% of calories and they should be chosen from high biological uh, food sources. And carbohydrate, they should provide 50 to 55 percent kilocalories. And uh, it is important that we encourage the person to take insoluble fibers because it will help in treating constipation. And uh, just like a normal diet, fat should comprise of uh, uh, should comprise 25 to 30 percent of total calories. And uh, the due importance should be given to ensure that we are providing ample amount of essential fatty acids because the skin is uh, badly affected in these cases. Due importance is given to seeing that the micronutrient deficiencies they are taken care of because of uh, binge eating pattern that person gets so many micronutrient deficiencies. So it is important that vitamins and mineral deficiencies they are taken into account while planning diet and uh, we have to ensure that 100% of recommended dietary allowance of vitamins and minerals that is met. And the patients of the bulimia because of binge eating and purging behavior in the past they fail to recognize hunger and satiety signals. So these biological cues they can be strengthened by regular meals only. 
and uh, prescribed in between snacks at reasonable calorie level only we can manage to sustain such patients and to sticking to their diet patterns and then patients they tend to uh, you know deviate from the prescribed pattern whenever this binge episode will occur during the treatment so uh, it is important to take uh, into account the behavior of the person by giving him a very good diet counseling so let's summarize what we have studied in this lecture we have studied about various type of eating disorders and among them we had focused on two eating disorders that is anorexia nervosa and we defined that it is a voluntary self starvation resulting in emaciation and then we studied about the second eating disorder that is bulimia nervosa which is a disorder characterized by episodes of binge eating or very rapid intake of large amount of high calorie food which is accompanied by self induced vomiting and we learned how to diagnose patients suffering from the eating disorders and then we focused on the nutritional management of anorexia nervosa and bulimia nervosa now this finishes our module 4 that is nutritional management of weight imbalances and eating disorders thank you